What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love After Lockup. This is season two, episode 35, Love or Con. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about this video. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload the content. Let me get my thumbnail in real quick because this is one thing that I'd be struggling with. Okay, we got that. So, y'all, this episode was good. Finally, we get to figure out some secrets and what's going on with everybody. So, I'm just ready to get on into this review because I do not want to make this review long at all because it is way early in the morning. So, hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. Lizzie and Daniel. So, Lizzie, um, not Lizzie. Daniel and his mama, they on their way to the jewelry store because he wants to pick out a little ring to give to her. He's looking for a promise ring, right? Mama's going with him because A, he ain't got no damn job. And she's volunteering to, you know, buy the ring because, you know, she wants to be there to support Daniel, whatever Daniel wants to do. Even though she don't like a damn thing about Lizzie and she feel like Lizzie is not who the one is for her son, she's still going to be there to support her son regardless of what's going on, right? So they get to the little jewelry store or whatever, and he finds this little ring. Now, first, they're looking at some other rings, five, six hundred, seven dollars. Mama ain't got money like that, and she ain't got no damn money to spend, even if she did have it like that, right? He's telling her, um, the jeweler, that he's looking for something like a hundred, hundred twenty dollars, something like that. He ends up finding her this little ring with this little heart, this little itty bitty diamond on or whatever. It's about $200. Mama say $200. That's as far as I'm going to go. It is what it is, right? Now, what he's not telling Mama is that's really going to be an engagement ring. And he plans on um, proposing to Lizzie later on that night. Now, once Mama find out about that, she going to lose her shit. She going to act a plum damn fool. Because producers ask Mama, like, how would you feel if this was, you know, if this were an engagement ring? Would you be here to buy an engagement ring if this is what Daniel wanted to do? And she's like, oh, hell no. absolutely fucking not. Because he ain't ready for marriage. She damn sure ain't ready for marriage. So, no. Mind you, there's still a whole bunch more secrets that we don't know about goddamn Lizzie ass that she's still keeping from him. All we know is about she used to be a little drug runner. That's all that he done got out of her so far. Now, she done said that he ain't learned about other past relationships. Okay? So, she still got a whole bunch of other skeletons up in that goddamn closet. Mama ain't here for it. And Mama gonna act a plump goddamn fool once she finds out that he's gonna propose to her. Now, he said he don't want to tell his mama because, of course, he know his mama ain't gonna be here. Not for that bullshit there. So, he wants to tell his mom after he proposes to Lizzie that they engaged. So, y'all, <laughs> mama gonna act a plum ass when she finds out, and I'm gonna be here for it. Angela and Tony. <laughs> y'all, so it's been four months since Tony got locked up. He been sending Angela letters, been calling nonstop. She said it's been four months since she cut off communication with him and she done, you know, stopped answering his phone call. She done broke up with him. He been calling, begging, pleading, crying the blues ever since he done got locked up. Now, come to find out, he's getting ready to get out soon. So that's why he's begging and pleading to get back in her good graces. Now, she ends up talking with her sister, Donna Faye. <laughs> I love that country ass name, goddamn Donna Faye. She talks with her sister, and her sister's like, the messed up thing about Angela is when she falls for somebody, she falls hard. So, because of that, she's worried that her sister gonna end up taking this goddamn fool back and going back on everything that she says. So, she talking with her sister, her sister like, look here, fuck that dude. Fuck him. Don't have nothing else to do with his ass. Cut his ass off because you already know that he going to end up doing this shit again. So, don't even do it. Now, she ends up going on a ride on this motorcycle that she bought him. Bought this nigga a whole motorcycle. And you done messed up something good like that, Tony, really? So, she ends up going on a little ride on the motorcycle trying to clear her mind and all this little shit or whatever. She get back to the crib. Tony end up calling her ass. She like, um, Tony, what the hell is it? What the hell do you want, Tony? I ain't got a goddamn thing to say to you. He tells her, look here, please don't hang up. I just want to talk to you, let you know I love you. Look here, I want to, I want to live with you. I want us to live together. I'm going to get out in a week. Like, I want us to get married. I want us to have babies, <laughs> smoke a carton of cigarettes every day, drink a 12-pack of Schlitz malt liquor. I want us to do the damn thing. She like, look here, I don't know if I can believe you. It's this other chick. And you didn't tell me anything about her. Like, 
she ain't trying to hear nothing that he got them say, but he ends up running game on her ass. He tells her that he'll never do it again, that he wants to get married. She's the best thing that ever happened to him and that. Now, back up, she does say that, you know, since she broke up, cut off communication with him, she stopped sending him money. So does that mean when he got locked up again the second time you were sending this nigga money? Like, he still has a hold on her ass because as he's giving her this whole goddamn sob story, you can kind of see her breaking down. And I was like, Angela, don't goddamn fall for it. Because she's a smart woman. She got a cute little body, little figure on her, all of that. Face look like she been smoking a carton of Paul Malls a day since she was like 14, 15 years old. Or some Biffin and Hedges or something or them brown cigarettes. But she looked like she been smoking at least a pack and a half a day since she was like nine years old. But, but like I said, she got a cute little body and she's smart. She obviously got a good job because she got plenty of money. Because she got plenty of it to send in his goddamn ass. So I'm hoping that she not dumb and that she don't fall into it. But like I said, you can slowly see her breaking down. So before she gets off the phone with him, she's like, look here, I got to go. I can't talk to you right now. He's like, okay, well, well, I love you. She's like, bye, I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you soon. Why you got to talk to him soon, Angela? Why? For what? Why sway? You need to cut his ass off altogether. Be done with it. Or this, he just gonna keep on doing the same goddamn thing. But you know what? Hopefully, like I said, hopefully she has made the right decision. And this is just what's going on right now. And when they do a little recap or whatever, they follow up, she ain't with him. Because child, she too grown and she too smart for that. Amber and Vince. Okay, so... Amber gets a call from Puppy. She tells Puppy, look here. The jig is up, bitch. I can't keep this shit up. I cringe at the thought of this man touching me. I can't marry him. He crazy as hell. He weird as hell. He nuts. So I can't do this shit. Puppy telling her, like, look here, bitch. You need to get it together. I think you ain't giving it your all. You ain't gung-ho about what the hell is the, the plan. I need you to stick to the plan, stick to the goddamn goal, stick to what the hell it is we supposed to be goddamn doing. Because you got a goddamn job here, right? Now, Amber says, when Vincent approached her, he told her that he had an invention that would revolution a lot, that would revolution revolutionize <laughs> the medical world and that he would make a lot of money off of it, right? Now, her job was to marry Vince and so she was supposed to get enough money to take care of her, puppy, and her mom. Now, see, puppy is her prison wife, but that's also her bitch in real life, right? So, puppy and her had a con that they was gonna con Vince when Vince was basically conning they ass. But they calling his ass too. You know what I'm saying? He fed her this game about what he was going to revolutionize for the medical world. And like I said, he was supposed to get all this money. That's why she was supposed to marry him, right? At the same time, she's supposed to be using him to take care of them, right? Now, puppy is telling her like, look here, bitch, you ain't giving it your all. I need you to be gung-ho about this. Suck his dick, do whatever the hell it is you got to do. She like, look here, bitch, you can't pay me to do this. Puppy trying to tell her, look here, bitch, I need you to hold on for the next two months until I get out. Once I get out, I take care of everything. She like, bitch, what you gonna do? You gonna be his daughter and his wife? Like, bitch, come on now. Puppy like, bitch, you wrong as hell for that. The only reason why I'm his goddamn child is because I went along with your goddamn ass and let this motherfucker adopt me. Now, she like, look here, that was y'all's idea. Y'all playing that shit out. I ain't had nothing to do with that. But uh, I did have something to do with this whole marriage thing. And I'm telling you, I can't come through on my goddamn end, though. I just ain't going to be able to do it. You know what I'm saying? Her and Puppy getting into it. She telling Puppy, look here, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep using this man because he's creeping me out. He's getting on my damn nerves. Puppy telling her, bitch, suck it up. You got a goddamn job. At the same time, Puppy Mama sitting out there on the deck listening to Amber on the phone the whole damn time. She talking to Puppy. So she turns around, see puppy mama, she like, oh shit, son, your mama listening in the whole time, uh, I don't know what all she heard, how long she been there, but, uh, yeah, bitch gotta go, she like, bitch here, I'm finna go, but I need you to 
lay it low and spread it wide, bitch. We got a goddamn job. So she hangs up the phone from there, y'all. I told you, we already knew that it was a con going on, but I'm ready for Puppy to get out because Puppy going to bust this thing wide open and I'm ready for her to bust this goddamn shit out. <laughs> so the production crew asked um, Amber, so did you um, lie about everything that you told us? Are you really not in love with Vincent? Were you never in love with him in the first place? And she was like, in love with him? Like, did I say I was in love with him? Or did I say like I had love for him? Now, nah, but she said she was in love with him. She said maybe in the beginning she was in love with him. But as, you know, the minute she got out, the minute she seen him, she already knew the shit wasn't going to work. So y'all... Like I said, we already knew it was a whole goddamn con going on. The whole damn jig is up. So, I'm just ready for Puppy to get out so Puppy can go ahead and uh spill the beans on the rest of this goddamn shit that's going on. Glorietta and Alex. Okay, so Alex has been out for three weeks. Glorietta getting all dolled up. She getting ready to go with her homegirl. She finna go dress shopping or whatever, right? Alex is on the phone with his homeboy, Kato. He like, look here, I'm finna slide through. I'm gonna call you, you know what I'm saying? You gonna pick me up, we gonna slide or whatever, right? Kato like, all right, cool, my nigga, I see you later. Alex say, all right, my nigga, I see you in a minute. I was like, er? Did he just say my, no, nah, he didn't. Let me rewind this shit back. All right, I'm gonna come pick you up. We gonna slide through or whatever. Boop, boop, you pick up, we gonna slide. He said, all right, my nigga, all right, my nigga. I said, this white boy just said my nigga. Now, look here, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this one goddamn time, and it is what it is, and I said what I said. Don't nobody come for me because I ain't sending for you. This is just my opinion. This is my channel. I can say what the hell what I want to goddamn say. Alex and other fair-skinned individuals from the same heritage and culture as Alex have no right whatsoever to say nigga. My nigga, your nigga, they nigga. That nigga over there, did y'all see that nigga? That nigga run fast as hell. That nigga just jumped over that fence. That nigga just stole that lick up out that stove. That nigga just hit that nigga in the mouth. You have no right, no struggle, no oppression, no reason to say my nigga. I say nigga, period. It is what it is. I said what I said. And we gonna move on from that. He ends up meeting up with Kato. Kato tell him, look here. Because he tells Kato that he wants to go meet up with his ex, Juliana, to see what the feelings are between them. See if there's still anything there between them. Now, I like Kato. Kato, he, he was a real dude. He was like, look here, why do you want to go and meet up with her and see if there's any old feelings going on between y'all? You finna marry Glorietta, right? He was like, yeah, I'm finna marry Glorietta. He was like, so you love Glorietta, right? Yeah, I love Gloria. Okay, so why do you need to meet up with homegirl? That's all that should matter is Glorietta. You shouldn't be meeting up with homegirl to see if you got any kind of old feelings for her. None of that. That ain't what it is. And I appreciate Kato for that. Kato, you all right with me. Still, I need to know what your background is. Why you saying my nigga too? Because I just, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So, he ends up going, pause for the cause. Side note, Alex got tattoos. Of bitches all over him. His ex bitches. Either they names, they pictures, they lips, all over his damn body. Now Gloriette is asking him about all these doggone tattoos. He gonna tell her you have to earn your right to be put on my body. My body is a temple and you have to earn your right to be tattooed on my damn body. I was like, nigga, are you really serious out here? She's like, okay, so we finna get married. We finna have a child. You ain't married none of these bitches, but you telling me, okay, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I was like, I was, but then again, I don't want no nigga that's got, you got all these other women tattooed on your body. Now, we, I got a whole problem with that. That says a lot about you. That's just my opinion. So y'all, while Gloriette is out with her homegirl looking at dresses, this fool is at the coffee shop meeting up with his ex, Juliana. Now, as soon as he sees her, he's like, man, she look beautiful. She's got a body I ain't never really seen before. She got a glow and a smile I ain't never really seen before. Turns out Juliana been in rehab, getting herself together. Now, I don't know what it was she was addicted to, but the girl look good. I give her that, right? So he says that when he got locked up, they were still together, but they kind of fell off. So, 
they sitting down, they having coffee. He reaching out, touching her hand and all of that. And I'm like, nigga, what is you doing? What in the hell is going on? What is you doing? So, he, well, she asked him, where were you the other night when you called me? And plus, you've been out for three weeks. Like, where you been at? He's hesitating, telling her. Well, yeah, um, I was actually at the hotel um, with my uh, with my fiancé. And she like, wait a minute, your fiancé? Like, how was that? How you got a damn fiancé? He's like, well, yeah, we've been together for a little while. And you know what I'm saying? Um, we're supposed to get married, this, that, and the other. She was like, you really love this girl? Like, where'd she come from? I ain't know what the hell is going on. And why are you here with me? He's like, look here, I just need to figure out everything. Like, tell me, what should I do? She was like, no, nah, bro, you need to figure out what the hell it is that you want to do. But just know this. I ain't no sideline hoe. I ain't no second place bitch. So you need to figure out what the hell it is you want to do. And I don't mess with men that's not available to me any damn way. So you figured out what the hell it is that you need to do. And I'm going to holler at you later. But homegirl even said, child, I know he's going to be back over here. Doing what it is he got to do, but he needs to figure that shit out right there. Lacey, Shane, and John. So, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. It's the next day after her and Shane went to this restaurant. He proposed to her. She got drunk at the damn fool, right? It's getting ready to be time for her to go pick up John from his release. Now, she's like, do you want to talk about what happened last night? He was like, yeah, go ahead and talk about it. Let me know what the hell is going on because you act a damn fool. Now, she did apologize for acting a fool, acting crazy. We already know that she was drunk. But she then tells him, look here, I need to go pick up John, figure out what the hell is going on with him. She like... Um, no, he's like, well, how can you tell me some shit like this? Like, you tell me that you love me, I propose to you, you act the fool, now you up and you finna go pick up this nigga from his release. Then she tells him, I need you to leave the house. Mind you, this nigga been staying with her the whole time, or I don't know for how long, but he been staying over there at the house with her. She tells him, you need to leave the house in case I need to bring John back to the house. I'll call you later after I figure shit out with John. Now, I'm glad Shane wasn't all the way stupid. He was like, hell no, I'm not finna leave. And I want to go with you, matter of fact, when you go pick this dude up. And she like, hold on. And even I was like, hold on. I don't think that's a good idea. I think you probably need to stay at the crib, you know what I'm saying, or at your mama and them house or something until, you know what I'm saying, the coast is clear. Mind you, Lacey had said a couple of episodes before, when she tell John what's going on, she needs to tell him in a public place because she's scared that the fool gonna snap, right? So, as she's leaving, she tells him, look here, I'm sorry, but I need to go figure things out with John. I, again, need you to leave the doggone house. He once again says he wants to go, and she ends up leaving without him. Now, this fool secretly ends up catching a ride up there to the damn release. She gets up there to the release. John gets out. They exchange a little awkward-ass hug. It was really weird, right? And so, she was even saying that both of them were saying that it was real awkward and was real weird, right? Finally, she does tell John, look here, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be ashamed. Just be mad at you, mad at me. He's like, what the hell do you mean that you... So what the fuck am I doing here then if you're in love with him? Like, what is what the hell is going on? They end up getting into a star arguing. And he's like, you know... How you gonna tell me that you love me? You could have told me that two months ago before I was gonna get out. Like, why do you even have me here? She gonna flip the shit. Was like, I needed to see what was going on between you and us. But we're in the same boat. We're like arguing once again. He like, hell yes, because you're telling me that you're in love with somebody else. So how the hell are we not gonna sit here and argue? Child, they sit up there going back and forth. She tries to give him back the ring. Lets him know that I love you, but I'm not in love with you no more. You can see that fool heart breaking. I was like, oh shit, he finna go out and he finna do some goddamn crazy. Because it's written all over his damn face. Child, he gets pissed off. He goes to leave. Then she kind of tries to chase after him. No, stop. Where are you going? Stop it. Where are you going? I'm like, bitch, what are you doing? It was just crazy. It was preposterous. So, he finally, he says that he was paroled to her house, but he gonna change his parole to his parents' house because now he don't want nothing to do with her. They done broke up from there. She says she's ready to go back to Shane and let Shane know what's going on. Child, next thing you know, Shane ends up walking up. John looking like, what the hell is going on? This goddamn Lacey looking like, oh shit, I'm caught up in something. Child, the episode ends from there. Y'all know how we TV do. They hype us up, get us to the good damn part, and they... Give us blue balls at the end. 
every doggone goddamn time. Y'all, but the episode ended from there. This episode was good. Like I said, finally, we got some secrets revealed. We heard, we figured out what the hell was going on with a lot of shit that we already goddamn knew, all right? If it was anything that I missed, please don't forget to put it down below and let me know, y'all. Please don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, share. Follow me on my social medias. They are down below in the description bo uh, box. <laughs> and Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.